بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته so in shall Allah will continue from where we left off last week and we towards end of the book now so in shall Allah today we'll finish this book and the sheikhs going to summarize and give us some general benefits and advice uh, with regards to what the author said towards the end of his book and some advice from him as well so he goes on to say thumma anha rahimahullah kalamahu ala hadhi nawaqid al-ashara bi ta'kid ala ahamiyatiha wa idm sha'n al-inayati biha wa anna al-inayat wa anna al-inayata بها معرفة ومدارسة من الضروريات المهمة لأن اتقاء الباطل لا يكون إلا بعد معرفة الباطل كما قيل قديما كيف يتقي من لا يدري ما يتقي فكيف تتقى نواقض الدين من, الل- من الذي لا يعرف أن الدين ينتقل بها أو لا يعرف ما هي الأمور التي ينتقد بها دين الله سبحانه وتعالى فمعرفة هذه النواقد من الضروريات والأمور المهمة وقد قال الخليفة الراشد عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه تنقد أور الإسلام أروة أروة إذا نشأ في الإسلام من لا يعرف الجاهلية إذا كان الإنسان لا يعرف الجاهلية لا يعرف الأمور المبتلة للدين لا يعرف محبطات الأعمال قد تدخل قد تدخل عليه في أعماله وفي حياته وهو لا يدري بذلك ولهذا معرفة هذه النواقد من الأمور المهمة والعظيمة So basically the Sheikh he says here towards the end of the book he says, then the original author, may Allah have mercy upon him, has said, and he mentions the ten nullifiers, which is this book, the ten nullifiers of Islam. And he basically is going to clarify and make sure to demonstrate the importance of these nullifiers and, and the importance with regards to staying away from them and knowing about them so you don't fall into them and you're able to stay away from them. And that we should pray, uh, pay uh, great heed and attention to these affairs so that we can avoid them. And the Shaykh says that's why we need to have knowledge of them and be aware of them. It's a necessity. He says it's an important necessity. Because he says, how can we stay away from sing, uh, something or to have taqwa of something that we don't know? That we're not aware of. And he says, and as an old saying has mentioned, an old saying, as an old saying goes, how can you have taqwa or fear something if you don't know what to fear? So how can you fear something that you don't know? Basically, meaning that we, we need to have knowledge to avoid sins. We need to know what these sins are. For example, if we want to avoid those things that are going to cause us to uh, and going to lead us to disbelief We need to know what they are so we can avoid them To avoid the pitfalls And this is what the Sheikh essentially is saying here And he goes on to say in this, uh, To the end of the paragraph He says that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu, May Allah be pleased with him He mentioned from his speech He said That, the, that Islam Is like take, taken away Class by class, each clasp is removed from Islam. If you were to think of Islam uh, like this, and a rope or a clasp is removed, if somebody has um, been brought up in the fold of Islam who does not know um, the the 
uh, the, the times of ignorance, who hasn't learned about what the people of ignorance, the pre-Islamic ignorance were upon. And the Sheikh says, same thing here, that if you don't know what these people were upon before Islam came, then how are we, how are you able to, uh, you know, execute your duties that Allah has placed upon you? It's hard. You, you won't be able to because you don't know, you don't have knowledge of it. So you need to have knowledge of those things that are, the, which are classed as pitfalls or sins or will lead you to, uh, destruction or problems in order to avoid them. Then the Sheikh says here, he says that not knowing these affairs, these, the, the false, the affairs that are false, and that lead to the nullification of your religion, the erasure of your deeds and actions, all of this stuff, then you're not able to, you're not able to protect yourself, basically. Then the Shaykh, he continues, he says, وَقَدْ نَبَّهَ الشَّيْخِ رَحْمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَلَىٰ أَهَمِيَةِ مَعْرِفَةِ هَذِهِ النَّوَاقِدِ مِنْ وُجُوهٍ مِنْ وُجُوهٍ خَتَمَ بِهَا رَحْمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ رِسَالَتَهُ هَذِهِ الْوَجْهِ الْأَوَّلِ أن هذه نواقض من أعدم ما يكون خطرا يعني من أخطر الأشياء وأضرها ومن المعلوم أن الأخطر من الأشياء التي تضر الإنسان بالإنسان الضرر البالغ يؤتنا بمعرفتها ومعرفة الأسباب الواقعة منها أكثر من غيرها واعتبروا بذلك بالأمراض و uh, تفاوتها عند عندما يوجد في مجتمع من المجتمعات مرض خطير و uh, معدي وسريع الانتشار <تصفيق> ويميت في الغالب اضراره على الانسان في صحه بليغه جدا اذا وجد مرض بهذه الخطوره كيف يكون حال الناس معه و uh, وخذوا مثالا على وخذوا مثالا على ذلك قريب uh, قريبا in fa'al nazal lati to summa or influenza lati to summa influenza al khanazir kayfa asbaha al alim kullahu il taj wa ya'ni asbah ta'mal muassasat wa sharikat wa khalqa lil bath so I'll stop there for a second because it's a long paragraph so the shaykh says that knowing the ways and means um, of uh, staying away from these uh, nullifiers of Islam, then is by way of is by having knowledge of them. This is what he's saying. So he says it's incumbent, it's important that we know the ways and means to avoid these dangerous pitfalls. And he brings an example of, for example, I think at the time of Rang or at the time of this lesson, there was um, swine flu. So we're going quite a few years back. He mentions the example of swine flu. He says when swine flu started spreading, and of course, it killed many people. Um, it killed many, many people. And it was um, an uh, epidemic at that time, uh, uh, a pandemic at that time. And, you know, it killed a lot of people. Uh, and he brings this example. He says, what happened when, when, when mankind realized the danger of this, they, they quickly moved towards looking for, researching for, uh, a vaccine or treatments uh, that would reduce uh, the death rates and to cure the people and treat them. And he brings this example because he says that's one thing with regards to the dunya and protecting your body and your life. But what's more danger than, dangerous than that, he says, he mentions here, and he, he, I'll, I'll mention this in Arabic and then I'll, I'll go through in English, but he mentions briefly with regards to the deen. It's, it's more dangerous that if you fall into uh, shirk for example or any of these nullifiers of, uh, of Islam that you end up losing all your deeds you end up leaving the fold of Islam which is far worse than the other example that he gave but he's trying to compare and contrast between the two that how people run uh, to look for a cure in these circumstances but maybe it's not always the same when it comes to something that's even more dangerous especially for the Muslims because Muslims, obviously we're talking about this with regards to us being Muslims he says <clears throat> كل ما كان أكثر تزيد الإناية به فمن هذا فمن هذا الوجه ينبه الشيخ يقول هذه من أعظم ما يكون خطر فهي خطيرة جدا وشرك وهذه نواقض ضررها على الإنسان في هلاك دينه وفساد دنياه وأخراه 
ضياء الدنيا والآخرة بضياء الدين. The Sheikh says so. Then what's more dangerous than an epidemic in this example that I gave of swine flu? He says it's losing your religion, falling into shirk, falling into these nullifiers of Islam. He says these are more dangerous and more harmful, and the, and and a more corrupt leads to more corruption. And why? Because he says that it it destroys your religion and destroys your dunya. It destroys your dunya, your worldly life, and it destroys your afterlife. And this is what the sheikh says. And he says, therefore, something that's more worse requires more care. Something that's more dangerous requires more care than something that's not as dangerous as it. He goes on to say, أَمَّا الْأَمْرَى تِلْكَ وَهِيَا مِمَّا يَحْرُسُ الْمُسْلِمْ أَلَا إِتِقَائِهَا وَيَظُلُّ الْأَسْبَابِ لِلتَّوَقِّي مِنْهَا بِطَلَبْ الْوَقَائِ وَأَيْدًا إِلَاجْ فِي مَا لَوْ بْتُلِيَا الْإِنسَانِ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أو بمقدمات لتلك الأمراض الإسلام جاء بهذا وهذا جاء بالتبي بالتبي الوقائي وأيضا جاء بالتب الإلاجي الوقائي للمرض قبل بقوئه والإلاجي المرض بعد بقوئه جاء الإسلام بهذا وهذا وفي الحديث من استبح بسبع تمرات أجوى لم يضره ذلك اليوم سم ولا سهر هذا من باب الطب وقائي الأذكار أيضا الشرعية so then the sheikh says that our deen the deen of Islam has come with both it's come with the measures to safeguard our religion and it's also come with the measures to safeguard our dunya as well as in he brings the example of you know um, um, preventative medicine that's also from our deen Preventing a disease and also curing a disease as well. And the Sheikh brings um, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he mentioned whoever takes seven ajwa dates, consumes seven ajwa dates, then he won't be harmed uh, that day by uh, magic or poison. And the Sheikh says this is from the topic of or from the uh, from the perspective of um, a preventative medicine. And the Sheikh also says he mentions the. Uh, the uh, the remembrances, the adhkar that we say from uh, from our deen, the adhkar, the du'as that we that we say that we supplicate with. Uh, he, he he brings a part of the uh, du'a. He mentions la uh, yadurru uh, shay than uh, asking Allah that was a, that nothing harms him, that nothing harms. So you know that the, all these methods they within our deen, they are there. The Shaykh will say, "هذه بدن لاي كلها واقعة وضافعة للأسقام والأمراض." ودعوات المأثورة وأيضا مراعاة تغذية النافعة والبعد عن الغذاء الضار أو الإفراط في الغذاء هذا كله من باب البقاية ما ملأ آدمي وعاء شرا من بطن بحسب ابن آدم أكلات يقمنا سلبهم and then the sheikh brings also uh, additional benefits he says our deen has also come from the point of view of our dietary requirements the, the deen also covers this where the Prophet Sallallahu said with regards to eating how we consume food and we're all aware of these hadith uh, these ones are well known amongst us and uh, for example this hadith where uh, the Sheikh mentions what the Prophet Sallallahu said about uh, that filling the worst vessel to fill is your stomach the worst vessel to fill uh, is your stomach with food and that the uh, uh, the, uh, that the person the person should not, uh, should only eat and fill his stomach up to the point where he can straighten his back. Basically, eat what require, what what helps you do your daily tasks. Eat what's necessary. Don't overeat, because as we know, as we all know, that overeating and being wasteful in uh, in terms of eating more than you should and filling your stomachs and eating more than the energy you're going to use can result in diseases. And one example that we can all agree on would be like overeating. What does it lead to? Obesity. What does that lead to? Chronic diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, and all sorts of hosts of other problems, uh, as we all well know, especially in our time. Then the Sheikh continues. He says, فَالْإِسْلَامُ جَاءَ بِالْتِبِّ الْوِقَائِ وَجَاءَ أَيْدٌ بِالْتِبِّ الْإِلَاجِ وَمَنْ يَقْرَأُ كِتَابَ 
الطب النبوي للعلامة ابن القيم رحمه الله تعالى يجد الفوائد العظيمة من خلال من خلال هدي دين الإسلام وما جاء عن الرسول الكريم صلى الله وسلم عليه في هذا الباب. Then the Sheikh just mentions again that our deen has come uh, has come with preventative medicine as well as uh, as medicine or treatments to treat as well as preventative treatment uh, uh, measures. And um, uh, the Sheikh just refers us to a book, uh, The Prophet's Medicine. As we all, this is a famous book that most of us will know uh, by uh, uh, Alama Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, uh, which uh, refers to uh, the prophetic medicine uh, and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with and what he talked about with regards to uh, uh, the Prophet's medicine. Then the Shaykh continues, says, فَشَاهِدُوا أَنَّ اتِّقَاءَ الشِّرْكَ وَاتِّقَاءَ النَّوَاقِضَ الْإِسْلَامِ ينبغي أن يكون عند الإنسان مقدما على اتقاء هذه الأمراض. The Sheikh says after mentioning all of this, he says the point being the central point and uh, the take home point. Let's say is he says is that we should we should basically fear we should fear shirk like falling into shirk and falling into these nullifiers of Islam, and we should make that. A precedence. It should be a precedent. It should come first before anything else, because it's more dangerous, as he said earlier. It's more dangerous, more harmful that you fall into shirk or you fall into any of these nullifiers of Islam that that nullify religion. Then you die upon that. There's no coming back. That's a dangerous situation to be in. And we should put that first before anything else. This is what he's saying. He goes on to say, "Wa in kan kuluha." تتقى لكن الشرك أخطر وضرره أعظم لأن المرض مهما كبر مضرته على البدن ثم من جهة أخرى إذا ابتلي الإنسان بشيء من هذه الأمراض واحتسب ذلك عند الله جل وعلا كانت أمراضه كفارة له ورفعة عند الله جل وعلا Also the Sheikh mentions an additional benefit He says that even if the Muslim um, um, you know, is struck with a disease or uh, an illness befalls him, then we know from the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that um, if a, if if a, if a disease befalls him, you know, or if he's ill, or you know, um, if he's struck even by a thorn, etc., that Allah will expiate his sins. For the situation of that illness or wherever he's in, as we all know, this is what the Sheikh mentioned. So even that's a benefit that will expiate your sins will be expiated as well. The Sheikh says, "For this illness, it will be kafarat and warifat in the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala." And also, the Sheikh says that being in a state of illness also raises your level with Allah. Yeah, raises your level. Yeah, with Allah Jalla Wa Taala. Then the Sheikh says, "وَقَدْ يَكُونُ لَهُ دَرَجَةً فِي الْجَنَّةِ لَا يَبْلُغُهَا إِلَّا بِمُسِيبَةٍ يُصَابُ بِهَا فِي الدُّنْيَا يَسْبِرُ عَلَيْهَا وَيَرْضَى بِهَا فَيَبْلُغُ بِهَا الرَّتُبَ الْعَالِيَةِ فَتَكُونُ هِيَا فِي حَقِّهِ كَفَارَةٌ وَرِفَةٌ And then he says that the person, the Muslim, he's patient upon. If an illness falls upon him, he's patient and he's pleased because he knows it's from Allah Jalla Wa'ala. It's from the Qadr of Allah. And the, the, uh, if, the, and as we know the conditions, the person is he's patient and he's pleased with what, what's happened because he knows it's from the Qadr of Allah and he's patient with it and Allah raises his level. In the sight of Allah, his level raise, is raised and he's recompensed. Yeah, with the reward. So I guess a reward as well as his um, sins being expiated. Then the Sheikh says, "Lakin wujud shirk wa huwa marad min akhtar al amrad, bal huwa akhtar al amrad wa ashnaiha. Or wujud hadi nawaqid hadi al kulha amrad wa hi akhtar al amrad wa ashna al obia wa ashad al asqam zaran al nas. Fa khutoratiha fa khutoratuha baliga. Fa Sheikh nabha awalan ala khutorati hadi nawaqid nabha." على أهمية الإناية بمعرفة هذه النواقض معرفة لها ودراية بها من جهة من جهة أنها أخطر ما يكون هذا من الناحية الأولى. The Sheikh says, however, shirk, it's the most disgusting thing that one can fall into. It's the most dangerous thing, the most harmful thing that one can fall into. 
and therefore we should be aware of those things that result in shirk and as we know the sheikh mentioned in previous lessons that whoever dies upon shirk and dies upon it then he will not be forgiven and as you know if you if you fall into major shirk then you leave the fold of islam and if you die upon that without realizing and asking forgiveness while you are alive and you die upon it then you then then, then, then it's essentially it's over so this is why the more dangerous the more harmful things we need to make them a precedence as in we need to put them at the forefront and deal with them and prioritize that so we don't fall into them this is what the sheikh is saying he says this is from one point of view or one perspective he says the second perspective or second point he says nabaha ala ahamiyat al inayati biha min jihatin uh, jihatin kathra wuqu'iha or min jihati kathra wuqu'iha يعني أنها تقع بكثرة بكثرة تقع بكثرة وتنشر في الناس بكثرة. So then the Sheikh says from another point of view of discussing this, he says the other point is that that the original author has pointed our attention to and pointed us to the uh, to take care when it comes to uh, these nullifiers. And he's only mentioned ten. There's more than ten. But the reason why he, uh, the Sheikh mentioned this in previous lessons as well, he says the reason why he mentioned ten. Is because they are the most frequent ones that people fall into. They are the most frequent of the nullifiers of Islam that people fall into. And they are the most widespread amongst the Ummah. So common sense and logic tells us there and dictates that we should be aware of those first. Because they are the ones that are out there. So we need to avoid them. And we can also teach other people about them because they're the, more, they're the ones that are spread. And people are falling into them. And so, as you can see from the other flip side of it is, that if you were to uh, teach this to somebody else, uh, or to a group of people, or, or friends, family, or people that you know, then it's more, it's going to have a bigger effect. Why? Because it's going to be more than likely that more people are going to be falling into these types of nullifiers than others that are not being discussed in this book. Then the Shaykh continues, he says, فَكَوْنُهَا تَقَوْ بِكَثْرَةٍ وَتَنْتَشِرُ بِكَثْرَةٍ هَذَا مِمَّا يَجْعَلُوا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ يَخَافُ مِنْ هَذَا النَّوَاكِدِ فَهِيَ أُمُورُ تَقَوْ وَتَنْتَشِرُ فِي النَّاسِ لَهَا دُعَاتُهَا لَهَا مُرَوِّجُوهَا لَهَا مَنْ يُزَيِّنُهَا لِلنَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ Then the Shaykh says that we should be more fearful of these because of their, uh, uh, their frequency amongst the people that they occur and that also that people are spreading these uh, uh, falsehoods uh, which nullify people's religion people are spreading these uh, nullifiers they, 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 they're telling people they're misleading people they are being promoted amongst the people and so therefore we should be more fearful and we should be uh, uh, aware of these ones he goes on to say وَفِي أَوْسَةِ النَّاسِ لَهَا مِنْ يَسْتَغِلُّ الْحَوَادِثِ وَالْأَحْدَاثِ وَالْأَمْرَادِ الَّتِي تَقَعُ فِي النَّاسِ لِرَبْتِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ لَهِ وَإِقَائِهِمْ فِي الشِّرْكِ وَالْكُفْرِ وَإِتْيَانِ السَّحْرَى وَالْكُهَنَى وَتَعَلُّقُ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ دُعَانٌ وَرَجَاءٌ وَسُعَالٌ فَتَنْتَشِرُ فَهَذَا مِمَّا يَخِيف مِمَّا يَدْعُو إِلَى الْخَوْفِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَشْيَاءِ وَالْحَذَرِ مِنْهَا أَنَّهَا تَنْتَشِرُ So basically the Shaykh here is saying towards the end of this paragraph here he is saying that Obviously, these are being spread by, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned as well, about um, uh, that, there, uh, that one of the most fearful things that the Prophet ﷺ feared for his ummah were the, the scholars or the, the, the so-called scholars who misguide the people. And there are those people who misguide people. They're there, they, they, they are promoting their falsehood, going against the Qur'an and the Sunnah, what the Prophet ﷺ came with, what the Sahaba were upon, etc., and so the, this is a real thing and it's happening. And, and so, uh, uh, and you know, people are falling into all these sort of things. This is what the Sheikh has mentioned here. So they're widespread. These nullifiers are widespread amongst the people, unfortunately. <clears throat> and, and so, and even things like people going to soothsayers, shirk, of course, they're going to soothsayers. They're going to fortune tellers. They're going to this, that and the other. And they're committing shirk by way of that or kufr. And there's many examples as the Sheikh went through over the previous lessons covering each nullifier. The Sheikh continues, says, Kadalika, 
يستفاد من كلامي رحمه الله عن كلامه عن هذه النواقد وذكره الأدلة عليها مما يؤين الإنسان مما يؤين الإنسان إنسان على مزيد الإناية والاهتمام بهذه النواقد أن الأقوبة التي أعدها الله سبحانه وتعالى لمرتكب لمرتكب هذه النواقد أعظم الأقوبات فهذا النواقد هي الذنب الذي لا يغفر ومن مات على شيء من هذه النواقد ولقي الله ولقي الله سبحانه وتعالى ليس له يوم القيامة إلا النار خالدا مخلد مخلدا فيها أبد الأباد فما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى والذين كفروا لهم نار جهنم لا يقضى عليهم فيموت ولا يخفف عنهم من عذابها فمن مات ولقي ربه سبحانه وتعالى بشيء من هذه النواقض ليس أم ليس أمامه يوم القيامة إلا النار بل ليس بينه وبين النار إلا أن يموت فقط ليس بينه وبين النار إلا أن تخرج تخرج روحه من جسده كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام من مات وهو يدعو من دون الله ندا دخل النار so then the shaykh says here that he says likewise uh, benefiting from the speech of the original author Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab may Allah have mercy upon him when he mentioned these nullifiers of Islam and he mentioned the evidences from the Quran and Sunnah for them then it helps the person it aids it helps the person assist the person it assists the person in what way it makes the person more careful is more he pays more attention to these nullifiers so he can avoid them why because the most sternest punishments are in those people who fall into any of these nullifiers and die upon it these are you that person whoever falls into any of these nullifiers will receive the sternest of punishments because these are the worst of the the sins and actions that one can do Another head of that is shirk, as we all know. So the uh, shirk goes on to say that this is the point that the digital author has made. And then he quotes an ayah as well, that the person who falls into this, uh, into any of these nullifiers, then the only uh, then the only thing standing between him and the hellfire is death. That's the only thing that is standing between that person and uh, the hellfire is death. And then the Sheikh brings an ayah that we read here from Surah to uh, Fatir, verse 36. And if you look at the meanings of that, we'll also see and it'll make things clear. Uh, verse 36, Surah to Fatir, let's read that. But those who disbelieve in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, for them will be the fire of hell. Neither it will have a complete killing effect on them so that they die, nor shall its torment be lightened for them. Those two will require every disbeliever. And the Sheikh brought that as evidence for us and to, uh, to ponder over. So the Sheikh says, whoever dies and meets his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, with a thing from the nullifiers of Islam, those things that nullifies deen, then in front of him uh, is uh, uh, in front of him and is the day of judgment except, in front of him and the day of judgment is except the fire. That's going to enter the fire when he dies. He, he's he's going to be thrown in the fire forever. And he also says that the only thing that stands between him and the hellfire is death only. That is it. There isn't anything except between him, uh, between him and the hellfire, except death. When is, uh, uh, when the when when his uh, soul is taken from him, taken out from his body, and then the Sheikh brings a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well over here, and uh, with the meaning of that, whoever dies and call and is in a state of calling or has called upon other than Allah. He will enter the fire. And whoever commits shirk, shirk akbar, the greater form of shirk, whoever supplicates, who does dua to other than Allah, then he'll enter the fire. Why? Because he's associated partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know that dua, as we know in the hadith, uh, dua mukhul ibadah, that dua or dua heal ibadah, that dua is worship. Supplication is from the greatest forms of worship that we have. And so, worshipping other than Allah is tantamount to shirk. It is shirk. 
and if you and shirk akbar is a greater form of shirk and if somebody falls into that and does not ask forgiveness and they die upon it then they're in the fire and this is what this hadith means here then the shaykh goes on falaysa bayn al-mushrik aw al-murtakib li hadhi nawaqid aw li shay'in minha laysa baynahu wa bayn an-nar illa an yamuta fan-nar qaribatan fan-nar qaribatan min al-mushrik kama anna al-jannata qaribatan min al-mu'min al-muwahhid nasal Allah نسأل الله الكريم من فضله فالجنة فالجنة قريبة من المؤمن ليس بينه وبين الجنة إلا أن يموت والقبر روضة من رياض الجنة للموحد صاحب الإيمان فهذا أيضا مما يبين خطورة هذه النواقض. so then the sheikh says that between the polytheists between the polytheists or the one who falls into any of these nullifiers of Islam, these nullifiers and nullifies Islam, then between him and the fire is death. And his destination is going to be the fire. And that, that the person who commits shirk or falls into any nullifier, then, then hellfire is close. Hellfire is close. And likewise, on the, on the flip side of that, the believer, the muwahid, the believer, who's upon the Tawheed of Allah, that worships Allah only, does not associate any partners with him in worship whatsoever, then the only thing between him and death, uh, the only thing between him and paradise is death. So if he dies, he's, he'll enter paradise. He'll be, he'll be given that victory of being entered into paradise, that reward. Yeah, because he was a muwahid. Yeah, he died upon the Tawheed of Allah. He was a believer. And the Shaykh says, we ask Allah, uh, for his uh, blessings So the shaykh says Paradise is close to the believer For the believer There isn't between him and paradise Except that he dies When he dies he'll be granted paradise As a reward And his grave When he dies When he's put in, in his grave He will he will be he'll be granted access To a garden from the gardens of Jannah And he says that's for the one Who's upon Tawheed And the person who Is upon Iman Who possesses Iman so then the Shaykh continues. He says, "Ida qara'at aydan fil Quran safwat al khalqi wa wa khawfahum min al kufri wa khawfahum min al shirki billahi wa du'aahum du'aahum Allah subhanahu wa taala an yaidhum min al kufri wa an yaidhum min al shirki wa an." يجنبهم الشرك هذا مما يدعو أيضا إلى الخوف الشديد من الشرك. The Sheikh says here, and it's a point to ponder upon. He says if you read the Quran also and you read about the best of people, as in the examples that were given the Quran of the prophets and messengers, the best of people, and the best of the prophets and messengers is our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So those noble, righteous people, those prophets and messengers, and the other righteous people, if you read, when we read about them in the Quran. And we we learn about what they say when Allah informs us about them that they are, uh, you know, scared of committing kufr, uh, you know, and they fear shirk. And these are the best of people. These are the people who are the people of Tawheed, the people of Islam. You know, the people who fear Allah the most, and they are fear they're fearing uh, falling into shirk or falling into disbelief. Then the Sheikh says that should be something that's striking to us, and it should make us feel more fearful. And should make us uh, 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 want to stay away from falling into shirk and be more alarmed because we're nothing like them. They're the better example and they're the more fearful. Then the Sheikh says, هذا مما يدو أيضا إلى الخوف الشديد من الشرك والخوف من من مثل هذه النواقض فإمام الحنفاء إبراهيم الخليل عليه السلام الذي حتم الأسنام بيده قال في دعائه مجنبني وبنية أن نعبد الأسنام. Then the Sheikh says, take the example of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, the at the head of the Hunafa, the uh, at the head of the people who worship Allah alone and not not associate partners with Him. When he said, when Allah informed us what He said in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, verse thirty-five. Where he asked Allah in this du'a that he made part of the du'a, part of his du'a, du'a he asked Allah 
to keep him and his progeny, yeah, uh, keep him and his progeny away from worshipping idols. And as we know in Ibrahim's story, that he is the one who destroyed those idols with his own hands, yeah, because of the shirk and the great abomination of shirk. Yeah, so the Shaykh gives this example. He says, وَمَنْ يَأْمَنْ بَلَا بَعْدَ إِبْرَاهِيمِ فَهَذَا أَيْذًا مِمَّا يَسْتَوْجِبْ مَعْرِفَةَ هَذَا النَّوَاكِبِ Then the Shaykh says also that this example shows us as well that we can learn from that the importance of learning these nullifiers, these things are nullified, those things are nullified with deen. It should make it even more important for us to learn them and be aware of them so we can stay away from them. The Shaykh goes on to say, وَلِهَذَا خَتَمَ رَحْمَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِهَذَا الدَّعْوَى قال نعوذ بالله من موجبات غضبه وعليم قبي لأن هذه الأعمال أو النواقض التي ذكر رحمه الله تعالى من أعظم موجبات حلول الغضب من الله سبحانه وتعالى على الإنسان فيعرفها العبد ويحذر منها ويتعوض بالله سبحانه وتعالى من ذلك. then the sheikh he the one who's explaining sheikh Abdul Razak al Badr the one who's explaining this book to us he says the original author this is why he also mentioned towards the end of his book, which we are, we're reading now, that part of the book that we're reading right now, the end of it, towards the end, that he asked Allah, he, he sought refuge in Allah from uh, anything that would lead to Allah's anger and painful punishment and torment. And the Sheikh says that these nullifiers that we've been talking about in this book and in all of these lessons, then these are something to be taken seriously and they are the things if somebody falls into will earn the Allah's anger and severe punishment so we need to be aware of it this is what the Shaykh is saying here he goes on to say وَالتَّعَوُّذُ بِاللَّهِ نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ مُوجِبَاتِ غَضِبِهِ هُوَ الْتِجَاءِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاَتِسَامْ بِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَنْ يُعِيذَ الْإِنسَانِ مِنْ الْكُفْرِ وَأَنْ يُعِيذَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ يُوجِبُ غَدَبَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَسَخَتِهِ وَقَدْ كَانَ نَبِيُّنَا كَمَا جَاءَ فِي الْأَدَبِ الْمُفْرِدِ لِلْإِمَامِ لِلْبُخَارِي للإمام البخاري بسند جيد كان عليه الصلاة والسلام كل يوم إذا أصبح وإذا أمسى يقول اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الكفر ومن الفقر وأعوذ بك من عذاب القبر لا إله إلا أنت يقولها ثلاثا إذا أصبى ويقولها ثلاثا إذا أمسى في كل سباه يتعوذ بالله ثلاثا ثلاث مرات من الكفر وفي كل مساء يتعوذ بالله من الكفر ثلاث مرات وجاء في الأدب المفرد وغيره عنه عليه الصلاة والسلام أنه قال للشرك فيكم أخفى من دبيب النمر ثم علمهم عليه عليه الصلاة والسلام دعاء دعاء عظيما في هذا الباب وهو أن يقول المسلم اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأن أعلم وأستغفرك لما لا أعلم So let's take a short pause there Then the Sheikh says Also seeking refuge in Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala from from his anger and he is seeking refuge with Allah and seeking his protection, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the person, he seeks refuge in Allah from disbelief. And that he seeks refuge from every affair that would cause Allah's anger to be upon him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and so the Shaykh says that the, he brings some pro, uh, examples from the Prophet, وسلم, some du'as. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say every morning and every evening three times. He used to say in the morning and three times in the evening. He used to say, "Oh Allah, indeed I seek refuge with you from disbelief and from poverty, and I seek refuge in you uh, or with you from uh, the torment of the grave or the punishment of the grave." La ilaha illant. There is none worthy of worship in truth truth except you and used to say this three times in the morning and three times in the evening also another uh, hadith where the prophet sallallahu said that shirk shirk will occur or shirk is like uh, shirk will happen and it'll occur and it'll come upon us uh, like the 
uh, footsteps of an ant. That's how, it, like, how uh, if you uh, try to think about that, the, uh, would we even notice the footsteps of an ant? Would we even see that? Would we even hear the footstep of, uh, footsteps of an ant? And that's how light it is. And that's what the shaykh says, that shirk will come upon us like the lightness of the footsteps of the um, ant. Meaning that it, 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 it can it'll come upon us unnoticed. So it's something to be, we should fear and we should be aware of so that we can stay away from it. And it's a stern warning if you think about it. It's a big, it's a big warning. Then the Shaykh said that the Prophet ﷺ uh, then taught was this dua. And this is, uh, uh, he said, O oh Allah, indeed, I seek refuge with you that I uh, commit shirk with you and I know it and I seek forgiveness. I seek your forgiveness with that which I do not know. So this dua is very important to learn. This scholar is also mentioned in other lessons that this dua is an important dua that all of us should know and we should say it regularly. Why? Because we're asking Allah to excuse us, we're asking His forgiveness and uh, 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 from that which we don't know. Because sometimes you don't know something and you fall into it. And other times, you know, in the uh, contrast to that, is you seek in the start of this dua that you seek refuge in Allah, and that which you uh, in in that which you may commit shirk, for example, fall into shirk, and that you know about it. So this dua is very very important. Uh, to learn, we should all try and memorize it, inshallah. So then the Shaykh says, Rafihi ta'awud billahi min al shirk wa ja'anu alayhi salatu wa salam fi baab ta'awud, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min munkarat al akhlaq wal ahwa wal adwa. And similar duas as well mentioned here as well that we all can learn. And you find them in the Adkar books, a Fortress of a Muslim or Hisn al Muslim. All these duas are there and more from the Quran and Sunnah. So if we don't have that book, you can download it on your phone. Or you can buy it. It's like pocket-sized book called Fortress of the Muslim in English and Hisnul Muslim in Arabic. So if you don't have it, you should get that book. A small pocket-sized book you can carry with you. Um, then the Sheikh mentioned that he says here, "For Muslim, la la gina alahu an istiada an istiada ti billahi jalla ala wal itisam bihi wal iltija ilahi an yahmiyahu min hadi." Uh, Wa فضلا من الله ونعمة أي هذا التحبيب للإيمان والتزيين له تزيين الكلب به والتكريه للكفر والفسوق والإسيان هذا كله منة من الله. So then the Sheikh says that nobody's free from not asking or not seeking refuge in Allah or not seeking Allah's protection and not seeking refuge with Him. That we need to do this, in other words. We need to be doing this on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Nobody's free from that. And then the Shaykh brings an ayah from the Quran. And this is from Surah Al-Hujurat, verse 7. Let me check. Surah Al-Hujurat, verse Seven and star of eight. So let's just read part of this. And know that among you there is a messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If he were to obey you, i.e., follow your opinions and desires in much of of the matter, you will surely be in trouble. But Allah has endeared. So this is the part we should focus on. But Allah has endeared the faith to you and has beautified it in your hearts. And has made disbelief, wickedness, and disobedience to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, hateful to you. These, they are the rightly guided ones. This is a grace from Allah and His favor. So that's the following ayah. Start with the following ayah as well. 
So that coincides with what the Sheikh is saying and telling us here. <clears throat> so then the Sheikh says, فَالْعَبْدُ بِأَمْسِ الْحَاجَ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَلْجَأَ دَائِمًا وَعَبَدًا إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ صِرَاتِهِ الْمُسْتَقِيبِ Then the Sheikh says that the servant of Allah, Jalla the slave of Allah, is, all, is in dire need and is always in need in seeking refuge with Allah forever. With, uh, seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that I ask him that I guide him to his straight path sir, uh, sirati al-mustaqim sirati al-mustaqim and we say that in ha, we say that many times in our five daily prayers surat al-fatiha we, all, we ask for guidance and that's guidance to keep us on the straight path yeah to keep us firm and stay on it then the shaykh says wa'an um, wa'an y- يُعِيذَهُ مِنَ الزَّيْغِ رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا وَأَنْ يُجَنِّبَ الظَّلَالِ الظِّلَالِ وَسَبِيلَ الظَّالِينَ الظَّلَالِ وَسَبِيلَ الظَّالِينَ وَفِي الدُّعَاءَ عَنْهُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ بَلْ كَانَ مِنْ أَكْثَرِ أَدْئِيَاتِ اللَّهُمَّ يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِتْ قَلْبِي عَلَى دِينِكَ وَكَانَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ كُلَّ مُرَّةٍ يَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُرْشِدُ إِلَى ذَلِكَ يَقُولُ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِكَ أَنْ أُذِلْ أو أُذِلْ أو أُذِلْ أو أُذِلْ إلى آخر الدعاء والأدية المعثورة عنه في هذا الباب كثيرة وكلها تأكد أهمية التعوذ بالله تبارك وتعالى من الضلال التعوذ بالله من الكفر التعوذ بالله من الشرك التعوذ بالله من من مثل هذه الأمور التي ينقاد بها دين العبد. سيدنا الشيخ says here as well for example he says and that we seek refuge with Allah even by saying like from Surah Ali Imran verse 8, part of verse 8, where it said, where, where it said Rabbana la tuziqulubana, Oh our Lord, don't deviate our hearts. We ask Allah for protection and seek His refuge. And this is another example. The Shaykh also says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to say this dua and it was the most said supplicate dua that he supplicated with. And he said, Oh Allah, turn of the hearts. O turn of the hearts, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O turn of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion, upon your deen. And also the Prophet ﷺ used to say whenever he left his house, whenever he would leave and go outside of the door and leave, he would say this dua, uh, as mentioned in previous lessons as well actually. And this is why I urge you all to get the book, Fortress of a Muslim, if you don't have it. Fortress of a Muslim, History of Muslim, free on uh, App Store and uh, Play Store for Android phones. And uh, you can get the book as well, um, which is worth having. Oh Allah, in uh, I seek refuge with you, uh, that I may be misled or mislead someone else, or etc. This dua to the end of it, the Sheikh just mentions a part of it, and these are duas that are well known. And the Sheikh says that these are uh, duas uh, that have been reported on the authority of the Prophet and there are many. And they show us the importance of seeking refuge with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala from misguidance and from disbelief and from uh, shirk, polytheism and, and from the likes of these affairs that nullify our religion. He goes on to say, وَيُؤْلَمْ مِنْ خِلَالْ مَا تَقَدْمَ أَنَّ الْعَبْدَ يَحْتَاجْ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ إِجْمَالًا يَعْنِي لِلْوِقَايَ مِنْ هَذِي النَّوَاقِدْ يَحْتَاجُ أَمْرِينَ الأمر الأول يحتاج إلى بذل الأسباب وبذل الأسباب تكون بمعرفة هذه النواقد ومعرفة خطورتها والوق... والوقوف على أدلتها وأقوبات التي أعد الله سبحانه وتعالى لأهلها والحذر منها وم... ومجانبتها والم... والمباعدة عنها هذا كله داخل تحت بذل الأسباب المطلوبة من العبد The Sheikh says then it needs to be known that these affairs need to be known and the servant, he is in need of knowing this subject, this topic generally, from the general point of view, to avoid uh, falling into these nullifiers. And he says, he, the slave of Allah needs to, needs to cover two affairs, needs to be involved in two, two affairs need to occur. The first affair or the first issue, he says that the, the, the person needs to uh, uh, basically cover all the ways and means. He needs to uh, cover and take all the ways and means that are necessary, that are halal, obviously, are necessary to 
steer, uh, to 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 uh, to protect himself, and that is by learning these what these nullifiers are by learning about their dangers, uh, by stopping uh, and pondering over and spending time over the evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah, and also uh, contemplating over um, uh, the punishments that result that Allah has prepared for the people who fall into them and die upon them, and being aware of uh, uh, of them and staying away from far away from these nullifiers and not falling into them. He says all of this is exp expending your energy in taking all the ways and means that are requested and wanted and required by the servant of Allah Jalla Wala. Point number two, he says, well, Jani Bathani, and from the second pers the pers second perspective and point here, he says, Alil tija ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi dua bi an yu'idha al-abda min hadhi al-umur wa an yaqiyahu iyaha wa an yu'afiyahu min al-wuqu'i fiha wa an yusallimahu min al-zayf. And he says the second uh, way and uh, thing that the person needs to do is seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by supplicating, making dua, by supplicating, as mentioned earlier, examples that the Shaykh gave, some examples, that that Allah, uh, by way of that, that Allah will protect him uh, and keep him away from these affairs and that he won't fall into them. And this is what the Sheikh, uh, this is what the uh, the servant of Allah needs to do, so that he stays upright, stays uh, stays away from these defects, these nullifiers, and anything else for that matter, and from uh, being deceived and uh, going astray. The Sheikh continues, says, "Fahuwa, fahuwa bihajatin ila hadain al amraini wa qad zakrahum alay salatu wa salam fi qolhi." So then the Shaykh said that, that the servant of Allah he needs these two affairs. He needs to be in the state of what these two affairs that the Shaykh described. That he needs to do be doing these two things and he will be protected by Allah. Um, and the uh, uh, the original uh, the Shaykh mentions the original author also mentioned uh and quoted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said that uh, strive upon this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said strive upon that which benefits you and seek Allah's aid finally the Shaykh says ثُمَّ خَتَمَ الْمُصَنِّفِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ الْرِسَالَةَ بِالسَّلَاةِ وَالسَّلَامِ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ then the Shaykh says that the original author he finished. He finished his uh, book by uh, by mentioning uh, uh, sending salutations and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Nasal Allah al Karim and yajziya hadi al Imam wa aimat al Muslimin khair al Jaza ala hadi al Juhud al Mubarakata wa la amal al Mubarakati wa la amal al Mubarra نصحاً لدين الله وتحذيراً لعباد الله ونسأل الله الكريم رب العرش العظيم أن يعيذنا من الشرك ومن الكفر ومن النفاق ومن الفسوق وأن يعيذنا من منكرات الأهواء والأخلاق والأدواء وأن يصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو إسمة أحمرنا وأن يصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأن يصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَ الْحَيَاةَ زِيَادَةً لَنَا فِي كُلِّ خَيْرٍ وَالْمَوْتُ رَاحَةً لَنَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَرٍ وَأَنْ يَغْفِرَ لَنَا وَلِوَالِدِينَ وَلِلْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ الْأَحْيَاءَ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ نصر الله الكريم لنا ولكم التوفيق والسداد والعون على كل خير والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. so then the sheikh finishes off with a dua where he says he asks Allah he asks Allah that he reward this imam this great imam that authored this book. Uh, and also the imams of the Muslims, the best of rewards. 
uh, upon this effort, this blessed effort and the work that's been done and the advice uh, that they've given uh, um, for the sake of Allah uh, to the Muslims and what they've uh, and and the awareness that they bring about for the Muslims for the sake of Allah and he also says here that he asks Allah uh, the uh, Lord of the Noble Throne the Great Throne the Noble Throne the Great Throne Throne uh, that that he protect us from sh falling into shirk and disbelief and from hypocrisy and from uh, all kinds of evil sins and deeds and that, he, uh, and that he also asks Allah for us and for himself that uh, uh, that Allah protect us from all kinds of evils de whether it be desires you know bad manners and the likes <clears throat> and that he rectify us and our deen our religion yeah which is our which is our protector our deen is what prote protects us from the punishment of Allah and that he rectifies us and our deen which is our which we live in so the deen the, the, the sorry the dunya that we live in that he rectifies uh, our dunya that we actually live in like we, we live in the dunya right and that he rectifies our afterlife in that which we will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he makes our our life uh makes our life in this dunya everything that which is good and in an increasing good and makes our death uh, easy uh, and f and far from every evil and that uh, he asks Allah for uh, that he forgive us and our parents uh, and the uh, the Muslims uh, the male and female Muslims the believers, the male and female believers, the ones who are alive and the ones who have passed away. And then he goes on to say that uh, we ask Allah, uh, uh, f uh, we ask Allah for success and uprightness and his aid and help upon every goodness. And Allah knows best. And then he sends salutations, blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions and the people who follow him, uh, Ajma'een. And by having said that, Alhamdulillah, we have finished this book um, and we've completed all the lessons. Alhamdulillah, so inshallah, within the next week or two, we'll begin a new book and I'll inform everyone via the channel, inshallah, uh, when that will be. But most likely, it will be on the same time, same day, inshallah. Uh, I'll have to have a think about which book to choose now uh, to go through. And inshallah, hopefully, we can all benefit from that as well, by Allah's permission. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته